morning. An unforgettable week. Not for not just this morning. You point the program is personalities, politicians, and perspectives. And to my right and to my left, I'm surrounded by personalities. Who has much perspective on the speech last night? State of the Union. No, no perspective at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Blindsided. I well, thought just I, blindsided her. I kind of thought that maybe the bottom line was that he did say that he did want to work with the Congress. Uh, but my way. But I thought that the the rest of the subliminal message was that if they saw things the way he did, he'd work with them. Otherwise, he had a plan. And he was going to do it. Uh, Abe Lincoln wrote the uh, critique on that. <laughs> Abe said, that man can compress the most words into the smallest ideas of any man I ever heard. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> do you know about whom he's made that the, comment? Uh, no, I do not know the recipient of that oh, comment. Dear. But I thought it's, I, I tell you what, he said it for a lot of people we all know. <laughs> Well, here we are, uh, unbiased as always. Oh yes. The program is <laughs> program is viewpoint. The problem personalities, politicians, and perspectives. We're going to be, we've already raked over the politicians, so we'll just take uh, perspectives and personalities. There we go. Uh, quick kudo to Don Jordan. I think uh, Rotarians made him Rotarian of the Hour or something such. The quarter. Over. <laughs> oh yes, it was a quarter. <laughs> quarter. <laughs> anyway, congratulations to Don. You know these civic clubs do an awful lot for us here in this community. And uh, having been a Rotarian since 1946, that happens to be a long time. Uh, there's a lot of longevity there. Um, I'm a little bit biased because uh, of uh, all the work they do. The Kiwanis Club uh, uh, does a great, uh, got a great job. The problem with these uh, service clubs, uh, folks, uh, we don't have many younger members, and it's kind of yeah. typical of the of the times. Um, the Oaks Club, for instance, Steve and Jim, uh, 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 used to be, when you were uh, at Elk, it was an honor to be asked to serve in the chairs, and you'd start at the outer, very outside, and work your way, <laughs> take about seven or eight years to work sure. your way up. Now we uh, 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 bring Steve Sauer in as a member, and two days later we ask him if he wants to serve as his older brewer next <laughs> <Yeah>. year. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's a sad thing, but that's just kind of signs of the times. Well. But you know, when um, like when we moved here, I joined Junior Women's Club, and boy, I'll tell you, we had a lot of fun, and we used to have those follies, mm. and they were such fun, and uh, Junior Women's Club isn't even anymore, but I, but my children's life is so different from what mine was, because I've always worked part-time, and uh, so I had time to do this mm -hmm. and I think my kids are representative of most they work full time and they they work hard yeah, full time. I, I've got a son and daughter well, they're working four jobs between the two of them yeah and, and the, so the how are you going to go to junior women's club you know yeah. well that's another story for yeah. another day we were, we were just talking last night my wife and I about uh, when we came here bridge Oh, yes. Bridge was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Bridge clubs. Yes. And ladies would play of an evening, and uh, my wife still belongs to two, but she says the membership is a little older, and uh, it's tough to bring in new new yeah. gals because they're busy, as you say, with work and family and everything else. And so, uh, But she still enjoys it, so more power to her. Yeah, right. So. Right. I, we used to have bridge club, too, and I never was a very good card player. To tell you the truth, I did run across a couple pictures of my wife, women's club follies. Yes, dresses, exactly. Long dresses and oh, pictures last night. Get dressed to the nines oh, sometimes. They, well, Absolutely. they were all dressed up. I'm not sure what the whole deal was exactly, but she was it long formal dresses and a little bonnet over her head. I'm not sure what was the song. Oh well, we had costumes. This was some outfit, Cargill, if I'm not mistaken, out of New York. Yes. That yes. would come here. It, in the person of the director and he'd bring the costumes and the ideas for the various skits mm -hmm. and some of them were absolutely 
hysterically funny and some of them were more oh my gosh we'd be dancing girls and everything else <laughs> now here i am a great grandmother i can't even imagine i ever did no. those things no i've got pictures in my mind of you out there in your leotards dancing across the stage jumping high <laughs> well, and I remember Alan, Alan Tidebeck, we all remember him, he, he quit one number because my friend Pat Michelson and I were stationed by him, and it was a singing thing, and neither one of us are ever going to be famous for our singing. <laughs> Oh, well, God. we uh, didn't, uh, we didn't rile up anybody enough to get a phone call this morning. Uh, and, but if you want to come in and argue with us, that's fine. Uh, we'd be very happy, 648-5510. But we have some important guests here. Uh, so I'll uh, turn, as usual, have the introductions to you. And as you do, just admonish uh, our gentleman guest here not to be concerned about that microphone. He hadn't had much experience with radio or <laughs> microphones. So you go ahead. Okay. <coughs> okay. okay. Shirley Aukamp is uh, affiliated with Zion Lutheran School in Lincoln and uh, is the chairman <coughs> of the uh, upcoming pancake breakfast. Am I true? No, not this year. Yeah, now, this year. if you go back far <laughs> enough, we did share a number of them. But Well, it's like we're talking about, isn't it? You have to repeat. <laughs> you got to know who the players are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Steve Sauer, uh, wife, taught at Zion for how many years? 36 years. Was it really? 36 years. One year at Abe Lincoln School when we first arrived in Lincoln. Uh-huh. And then uh, 36 at Zion. Well, she, bless her heart. She was the last to retire of the original group uh, several years ago uh -huh. when the school first opened. So uh, she's enjoying her retirement. She's subbing at Zion Lutheran School mm -hmm. as we speak this morning. <laughs> so. Uh, and how long were you at Lincoln Community? I was there 34 of my 35 years. Uh -huh. That's about a year Remarkable. Uh, seriously, uh, in today's times, I don't think we're going to see teachers work uh, any 30 years. I just don't think that we'll see them any working. Of course, uh, the retirement and the pension thing is so mixed up. Right. Now, uh, right. Boy, you don't know whether to quit when you max out or whether to hang in there for a couple of three years. We'll talk about that in just a minute here. But we're specifically here to talk with Zion's, uh, uh, how do you stuff sausage? Well, is that gonna be the subject matter of the day? <laughs> today is the lesson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how many years have you stuffed sausage? Uh, it hasn't been that many, since oh. I've been retired a few, but. Uh, uh, ever since you retired. Ever since it. I retired, sure. I'm heading out there after we leave here. Sure. Today to uh, stuff the sausage and uh, uh, there's 14 hogs that have given their all for Zionist pancake and sausage. Yeah, Pat, uh, you know, and these are donated, by the if way. If you're going to have ham and eggs, <coughs> the, the uh, participation of the hog part is pretty oh, yeah. thorough. The yeah. eggs contribution yeah. to uh, hogs a total commitment. That's right. <coughs> that's right. Well, that's true because we are either going to butcher it or we're going to sell it because we, we sell the ribs, the backbones, the heart, the tongue, the liver. Everything but the squeal will be available probably at the uh, Zion Lutheran this weekend. And uh, the, the sausage, too. Uh, and that's, uh, that's really good. That's oh. really good sausage. And uh, at any <coughs> rate, come Saturday morning, you're going to have it with pancakes. Mm -hmm. And this is the how many annual? 1970. Seven? Well, we started the Zion School in 75, 76, but there were very few families. We had 13 children in K through 3 when the school started, and we'd had a preschool prior to that. Mm -hmm. um, and we, of course, <coughs> all schools talk fundraisers, and our group, mm -hmm. you know, talk that too. So we did, and um, someone had suggested maybe a pancake and sausage meal would be something we could do. And uh, so we thought, well, maybe we could do that, but we didn't do it the first year of the school. So uh, this would have been um, actually uh, from the second school year, 76, 77. So in February of 77, we held our first pancake and sausage meal. If I'm not mistaken, Shirley was the primary <laughs> mover and shaker of getting all of that organized and getting things lined up to work the tradition. That's yeah. a big, big chore you got. But you have to do something, especially I would think it would be 
imperative for a private parochial school uh, because uh, times are times are a little tough and uh, people make a choice to take advantage of a private education and I sure wouldn't be the I would be the last actually to say that that's not a good decision because uh, I think they get a good education for one thing plus they they also uh, get to be with other like-minded families and I think you maybe have fewer problems and the ACLU uh, ACLU doesn't tell them they can't talk about God yeah well yeah <laughs> right, right. no we um, it, it's a, a great um, a great I, I say community because the families work so close together and, and especially um, we've had that experience at Zion then as we grew and as the new school building was being uh, constructed and we worked together there and so families all along the way have been a very important part of the whole school situation. If you'd come out Saturday you'd see two pancake machines that were built by members of Zion, at least the idea for the pancake machines uh, came from uh, at least one Zion member. Now we have two machines. Tim Neitzel, I think, has his own pancake machine. A machine will travel. And he <laughs> works with the baseball boosters, I think, on occasion. On and, uh, what yeah. is a, pa a, a pancake machine? Well, it has a long grill, and then you have this device at one end just full of batter. Oh, and they where's the batter cross? Scoot it down the grill. Shh, no mm. kidding. And uh, bring it back, and then you've got Doug Shealy, you've got Herman Schwartz flipping pancakes and uh, putting them on plates and handing them out to folks. To uh, I eat. think you forgot so one. Shh. I think well, there were four of them across there. Sh <laughs> uh, I, I want Shirley to tell about the menu, uh, the menu which they're going to have <laughs> at the uh, at our at our. Meal. Sure. Well, some things have always remained the same, and our menu has always been the same. We have this delicious stuffed sausage, and we have very tasty pancakes, and we have a spiced apple ring for a little color and a little flavor along with our meal. And, of course, we have the beverages, but uh, uh, it's been rather a uh, maybe a humorous part of the thing that the apple ring, oh, Shirley's responsible for that. Yeah, the apple oh. ring. The red apple ring. <laughs> yeah, right. But anyway, there, things ha have some remained the same. We have the same menu that we had in the beginning. Uh, we are still serving the same date, the first Saturday in February, no matter what the weather. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first year, of course, we started out with borrowed equipment. Right. We didn't even have right. our own equipment. We didn't even know what we really needed. <coughs> but now we have grown to having all our own equipment. And as Steve mentioned about our pancake machines, which are quite unique, <laughs> uh, we have a bake sale along with the um, event. Uh, recently, we've added a silent auction, mm -hmm. which has been very, um, very good. Lots of fun and brings in a lot of funds also. Um, we have the meat market, which is we've always had. Right. Right. And... Uh, People place orders in advance for that, oh, and we, do. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have the frozen meat, and we also have the fresh meat because maybe somebody doesn't want mm -hmm. a two-pound package of frozen bulk sausage, but they can order the fresh and then package it into the size that their family needs. Um, we have such wonderful involvement of all the school families. Um, faculty and students will be working out there on Saturday, plus the families, plus friends of the school, members of the church, members of the community. It, everybody just works together, and we have a wonderful time. Um, starting early, what time do you go out there to start the... Well, 5.30, 6 o'clock to get the grease warmed up. up, warmed up <laughs> because we have to be ready by 7 o'clock when we open. you got to have that sausage done. So <clears throat> it'll be very early that we'll be out there getting it all set up. I used to do that, but I've I've changed jobs over the years <laughs> out there. This is early enough to come out to the radio station. I'll have yeah. my chances. It's a little later now for the pancake and sausage. But it, you sleep in morning. just a little more. Yeah. 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 Um, is, is your participation level 
higher, would you say, Steve, you were having been affiliated with public schools and your wife with a private school. Is the participation level on the part of parents higher at a pr private school, do you think? I think there's more involvement. Absolutely. Pardon? I think there's more involvement, yes. Well, I, uh -huh. I put it that there's yeah. more of a vested interest. Right. Yes. Uh, so to speak. And uh, therefore, I can see that the participation level, at Zion in particular, is greater than a public school. Because if, if parents are going to pony up to pay a tuition put their kids in a private school, it's almost axiomatic that they're going to have a, more of a vested interest in what's going on. From, from day one, our teachers go out and visit the parents in the home. When the students are enrolling <coughs> at, at uh, Zion Lutheran School, they visit them in the home, and I think from the get-go, the families know that the teachers do care, really care, and I think that translates into the parents wanting to be involved with the school and volunteer their services for something like the Pancake and Sausage Meal. I mean, mm -hmm. we have other activities during the year in which parents are also involved, but uh, we try to, I think, I think we do have good cohesiveness with the families that they know that their families, their children are important to the teachers at Zion Lutheran School. Well, we want to get into the, the parochial school side of it in just a few seconds here. Uh, let's take a, a little commercial break, Mr. Ash. Well, right back here live in the studios, a program of Viewpoint. Our guests this morning are uh, uh, Shirley Aukam and Mr. Steve Sauer. Many of you might mention or hear Mr. Sauer's voice. If you get up early in the morning, Steve shows up here like Jim Ash, like clockwork every morning, every uh, Monday through uh, Friday. Before uh, breakfast. At, a, at an early hour, yes, before breakfast for most people. Uh, Shorty and, and Steve are here representing the Zion uh, School out there, a great little school out there on uh, West Woodlawn Road. And uh, they've been established for how long now? Uh, has that school been established? 19, you said seven. Well, Let's see. 75, 76 was yeah. the first school year. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's just amazing. You know, uh, Judith, the reason Shirley uh, is such a good worker with the others in the community and so forth, it's, it's in her genes. Her mother, you know, is our neighbor down the street. Oh, yes, I know. 98 years young next February. <laughs> that remarkable. And living by herself. God love her. You know, that's, that's a heck of an accomplishment. So, um, going to have this uh, pancake and sausage breakfast next uh, Saturday morning beginning. The doors are open at 7 o'clock. Yep. Yep. And they're going to serve until when? One. One o'clock. <laughs> Is this your only fundraiser during the year? <clears throat> no. Or just your biggest? It's our biggest one. Uh -huh. It's the biggest one. We like to, we hope we can serve between twelve and 1,300 people. Is that we, about your norm? That's ballpark what we look for. We've got uh, 14 hogs butchered, so we're hoping that that will accommodate. We usually accommodates the folks that come through, you know. Now, uh, correct me, uh, uh, maybe that's not true in today's times. Those hogs have been donated in past years. Uh, some are donated, some we could have to go buy. Sure. Go buy. Well, you know, things being what they are in the farmlands today, it used to be there's hogs on about every farm. And uh, it's, it's, it's a rare farm now that has any kind of livestock on it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we also have uh, people that are generous and donate cash to purchase the hogs. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Mark and Diane Hunsley are the chairman of our event this year, and uh, uh, they are doing an excellent job. Um, I might add that uh, tickets are still available at the door, or they can be purchased in advance. Um, Adult tickets are six dollars. Children four and children two and under are free. Bloody Marys know, are not included. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's is so inexpensive, and they keep <clears throat> coming around to the table and saying, "Wouldn't you like another pancake? Sure. Do you want more sausage?" <laughs> My gracious, you could stay there the whole for the duration and fill up for the week. <laughs> it, one of the things I've noticed over the years, it's a social event. I mean, it yeah. truly yes, is a social yes. event for folks. <coughs> you know, uh, I see former students. My wife sees former students. Uh, but it's a, I think that folks look forward to seeing each other. 
Could even be more so this Saturday. Everybody's been cooped up for so long because exactly. of, the, of the cold weather. Exactly. They're glad to get out and, and socialize with somebody. Well. Definitely. <coughs> oh, I notice we have three and four generations of family that will come. Uh, former students come back. Um, you will see just people from all over the community, from the county, from various parts of the state. It is just a really a nice reunion, especially after a winter like we've had we've so had, far. Really. Which has been highly unusual type well, winter for yes. us, I dare say. But it's going to, it, this rest of the week now, it's not going to be below zero. Well, Jim did talk about much. a little snow maybe Friday. Yeah, but that's, yeah, snow yeah. is nice. It's this temperature okay. that's killing well, that's you. That's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> now, neither of you are officially connected with Zion School per se. Um, the closest we can say would Donna having been a teacher for all those 30 years. Well, we could also say, though, that uh, Gino Camp was directly involved in the establishment of Zion, of Zion. School. Yes, mm -hmm. he was. Uh, he was the chairman of the Board of Christian Education at the time that the school <coughs> became a reality mm -hmm. in uh, the community. And uh, uh, looking at for information last night, I uh, ran across several pictures of Gene involved with board meetings, working with Ivan Ray, who was also involved in contracting and getting things lined up. Mm -hmm. and, uh, financially and the planning part of it. So uh, indirectly, Shirley has had some contact and very close uh, relationship with the school, certainly. One other thing that you have annually at your school is the live nativity. Uh, uh, and and you sallied forth this year, too, didn't you? Boy, Boy that was brave. <laughs> yeah, that gets your attention this year to be a live, uh, uh, part of the live activity or nat nativity scene out there. Do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of the challenges of the live nativity this year was even getting the animals to have there because uh, that, as you mentioned before, so many of you know area farms that used to have animals simply do not anymore, and so it was more of a challenge for our uh, our families in charge of the nativity to get animals, but they were able to do it okay. and. Uh, uh, it also is a social event out there. Uh, we have uh, the kitchen crew that always has something warm for the participants to come in and warm up. Most they of them, needed it this year. Most didn't of them they? sign up for two shifts, and so they work a half hour. They come in, they warm up a half hour, then they go back out again for their second a half hour shift. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. We also have a family fun fest in the springtime of the year. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. We have uh, pulled pork sandwiches, we have sweet corn, we have dunk tanks, we have bakes, uh, we have an auction again. Uh, uh, but but uh, the big one is uh, is this Saturday, uh -huh. February 1st. That's the one that... Uh, uh, now here's a question out. off the wall. Uh, on events such as this, do we have anybody in the health department God, we're talking about government. We don't want to do this. <laughs> oh, seriously. Um, the health department go into these uh, uh, events like that in this school or that school? Um, I can't imagine. Well, I guess I can't imagine we have Big Brother's always around the corner. Uh, that ever happen? Well, well they would be checking the school on a regular right, basis, well, you know, well, yes, because as far they're as the in the business of serving lunch But I was just kids. wondering if, if something like that raises a flag with somebody. I can't imagine. All, all I can tell you is the people who do serve the food uh, all have gloves. Oh, yeah, on we've all that seen that. Yeah. So that's, that's covered, you know. That's and a rule, yeah. inspected, I'm sure, by the. Oh, the sure. Department. Sure it is. Yeah, on a regular basis, they mm -hmm. check all the schools and restaurants mm -hmm. and what have you. But it's a safe thing to say, Judith Kay. Uh, and Jim, and um, that is, keeps community, a small community particularly, is it better off for having a parochial school or two in the community? Uh, is that a, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm out there with, I'm on the tree limb now and I don't want the limb to break on me. Uh, but it just seems to me that uh, personally, that uh, if you have uh, um, parochial schools in the community, that uh, there, because there are some parents out there in any in, in any community that really have a problem with uh, uh, sending their kids to public school for whatever reason, valid or non-valid. So, 
is that a good thing for a community to have parochial schools in the system? I always look at it as a chance for spirited competition between the, the different, different schools. I, uh, we enjoy competing with West Lincoln Broadwell. Uh, we always enjoy competing with Carroll Catholic, but I mean the other the uh -huh. feeder schools in the area. Uh, it's just, I mean, maybe it's my competitive nature, but I think it's always kind of good to have that interaction between the different schools. And um, I mean, we pay our taxes for the public schools, but we also send our kids to a private school. I mean, that's just which is a choice. Which is a choice, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's you know. supposed to be the American way, right. I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to be Lutheran? No. to go no. to Zion Lutheran. No. You take even us Presbyterians and Episcopalians? Oh, especially. Especially. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, I, I didn't you know. <laughs> uh, you know. Yeah. No, Steve might have the percentages of, of children that are not Lutheran that attend the school. I, I don't, but no, we, we have a large number from, from the uh, other churches that <laughs> attend our school. A girl I work with uh, has two uh, children, and they both attended Zion and you know they're awfully good people uh, of course they are who they are mm -hmm. and they pr probably would have been good people no matter where they'd gone but I always look at them and think I wonder if that's partly to the credit of going to a school where um, you're able to demand things of the kids well you don't have to do some things that are mandated that are not necessarily the smartest mandates in the world in a parochial setting. Right. Although our school is accredited, mm -hmm. uh, we right. are accredited. We are we have a seven-year program and so on. So we have to keep certain standards. Uh, oh, absolutely. Stuff there. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I I just look at the staff, the care that they give to the kids. I mean, it's always something which. Uh, you get with a smaller school, I think. The personal involvement, and if there is a problem, uh, the teachers, uh, to me, is, are just, they're there to help. Mr. Shoemaker's there to help whatever way that they can. He's been possible. your superintendent for a long time now, hasn't Steve he? Steve has been there. He's an institution. I've been there a, a number of years. Uh, I'm not sure how many principal years, but at least, I would guess, 15 to 20, uh, possibly as principal. Uh -huh. I was through I better say 15. Uh, not that old. Uh, but <laughs> but I mean, the staff cares, you know, and that's I think makes just a world of difference because there is this connection with uh, the parents, the kids, and uh, the I think the teachers love what they do. What is your census there now? I'm well, sure it's grown for, what did you say, well, Shirley? It was well, 13 at the beginning? <laughs> yes, we had 13 in K through 3. Right. And then, yes, we, we did grow. And we added a grade each year. And I think our highest enrollment was probably in the 220s, and that included preschool. But as with all schools, we just don't have the children in the community, number-wise, that we had years ago. So mm -hmm. enrollment in all schools is down now and so we are below 100 i think at the moment we're close yes mm -hmm. right at maybe 100 or just a little lower than that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do you uh though i no i shouldn't say it that way you do feel of course that that still enables you to to offer a broad variety in your curriculum so that the kids get a a broad education well, I think they do. I think they're always looking to improve on textbooks. They're looking at technology. The Woods Foundation has been very helpful to oh, us over the yeah. years. Yeah, same man for that. Available to us and to all the schools in the area. You know, uh, yeah. I don't think we're cut. I don't think we the kids lose out. If anything, I think they have uh, that much more personal contact with the staff. And our books are current. Our computers are current. Uh, we have the smart boards. I think we have the uh -huh. technology yeah. out there. So. I think we can compete with pretty much any school. And every bit of what you're talking about costs money, and plenty of it. it and that's why you have a pancake breakfast, et cetera, et right. cetera. Right. I mean, that's... And we want to help families. We, we have... Uh, part of this goes to scholarship money. Uh, we provide a scholarship if the parents are a little short, if they can't possibly make it, we want them to come and talk with uh, the school, and maybe we can work out some financial arrangement because the, there's money for a scholarship to try to 
help them become a part of our school. We'll That's help something with which I was not aware. Aid, if you will. Mm -hmm. They have to bring in some tax forms and they sit down and talk with folks and uh, we see what we can do and we'll try to make them a deal. If you would like to send your son or daughter or children here, uh, here's what you're going to be needing to put forth and here's what we can do to help uh, cover, defer some of that cost. That's great. That's and the, and the, this breakfast then is <coughs> is for the scholarships. Did you well, say? Well, that's, that's part of it. I part think of it's it. for other, part other of things it. as well with, within the school itself. Uh -huh. that we, we're trying to do here. Are so parochial schools mandated X number of, of school days uh, as the public school system is? In other words, we have snow days built in into public schools and all that, and have to put in. Then we like this winter, we've been closed. Yeah. We're going to have to go a little further but, in the spring. I, I think uh, Steve Shoemaker tries to plug our scheduling with the high school calendar. Uh -huh. So I think uh, as far as total number of days, he'll try to be right there with the high school as far as, and I think they do have a certain number of days that they have to be in session yeah. for. Yes. Okay. Yes. And our students do well when they go on to the high school. Um, they excel there because they've had the expertise at Zion of learning how to study and how to go on with everything that's needed to do at school and uh, so we're just very proud of our students as they go on to high school and on into college. They do get the homework on a regular basis. They have homework. Mm -hmm. a lot of, they have a lot of homework. For some, uh, it's, uh, high school is a bit of a step back. They don't have as much homework because they got through Zion Lutheran School. They survive the, that homework on a regular basis. They get to the high school sometimes and it isn't quite as much in all the subjects as maybe what they even had at Zion Lutheran School. So they're, we think they're very well prepared for high school. That is so good. So I went to high school with a young man who took his books home at noon. Seriously. Yeah. He took his books home at noon. He lived a block away from the high school. And the bottom line is he graduated near the top of his class in Annapolis. So he was a valedictorian of our class. and. Uh, Four years hence, he was uh, graduated near the top of the class of Annapolis. Annapolis. So, uh, taking your books home wasn't the worst thing in the world. We no. always, well, no. you know how how guys are. We laughed at him, derided him. Well, hello. Yeah. Zion Lutheran School is not an anomaly. We're not just one out in there with no other Lutheran schools. Um, there's three Lutheran schools in Springfield. There's a huge Lutheran school, grade school up in uh, Bloomington. There's a Lutheran high school, as I think if you watch the Springfield News right now, you know, uh, that's having success. They're building permanent buildings now in Springfield. Uh, there's hundreds of Lutheran schools, public uh, Lutheran uh, grade schools throughout the country. There's Lutheran high schools throughout the country. <coughs> we have uh, universities. universities throughout the country mm -hmm. as well. So we try to get all of our staff uh, trained via Concordia through our universities, if it's possible. Um, so we think they're well qualified and there's a network all over the country of these Lutheran schools that are out there to try to help and provide a service. There was a, a Zion Lutheran in Mount Pulaski too. Still. There still is. Uh -huh. There still is. Yeah. In fact, they've had a recent uh, building program there, which has really increased well, the size of the news. schools. Mm -hmm. That's got to be tough in a small community, oh, mm -hmm. uh, economically. Mm -hmm. to support that. That's got to be very difficult. I make monthly visits over there. I still haven't seen they have actually have a wooden gym floor. I want to see their gym floor. <laughs> oh, their <laughs> gym is fascinating. Is they have real? a ceiling that's up in the sky. Yeah, <laughs> it, it just looks really... Uh, and this is a small community, like mm -hmm. you said. And this is a big project. Uh, uh, I, I found it curious going over uh, some mm -hmm. of the minutes for the building of our school here in Lincoln. Uh, uh, the agreement from the congregation was that it, the maximum was a million dollars for the school to be built as far as that was what it would cost uh -huh. the congregation. Uh -huh. We got the budget, we got the, uh, the uh, analysis from the contractors and so on, and uh, it came in at 992000 and odd change. Is there any? But the only way they could get it under a million was they had to take the sinks out. In, of the of classrooms in one side of the building. So if you go to Zion, oh, is on right? one side of the, of the building, there's no sinks. On the other side, they got sinks. <laughs> but, but that's I how they it. snuck it in under budget, and uh, uh, it happened. But that was a million-dollar project, you know, and that's daunting. Oh, terribly least. daunting. Well, if they'd work like the government does, that'd be no problem. <laughs> Just go ahead and do it. 
<laughs> we'll figure right we'll figure a way out. Go ahead and do it. But they, yeah. they had to build that school just like we have to do things in our home. You right. know, you might right. want a, a Rolls Royce, but maybe you can't afford much more than a used car from the local lot, you know? Sure. So you have to do what you have to do. <clears throat> and it took convincing. I mean, it was an act of faith on the part of a lot of, I mean, on the part of this congregation to, okay, let's go a million dollars in debt and build this thing and let's see what happens if we can get it paid off. And I'm not sure how many years ago we... We had the mortgage burning ceremony. <laughs> we, had a, we had a ceremony <laughs> to commemorate the fact it's paid off. Did, did the incredible. membership oh. have to uh, make pledges? Is that how you raised it? There were a variety of uh, different strategies put in place. Uh, Dick Robinson at, at one point was uh, uh, helping out with uh, fundraising. Uh, I'm sure Gene was involved with this. <coughs> Ivan Ray was involved with it. Uh, uh, our pastors, yeah, it was a different Total commitment. commitment. It really mm -hmm. had, it had to be. It had to be. And... Uh, we're just enjoying it now. But when you first broached the subject with the congregation about we'll be asking you for pledges because we're going to go for a million dollars and, and build a school, what was the reaction? Mixed. Yeah. I bet. Well, I bet there were some that said, whew. Yeah. It was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we, yeah. But we had a gal, Eunice Hausler, stopped in to say hi one day, and she said, you know, this your church could use a school. And Eunice Hausler was just here uh, this past weekend, but uh, she was uh, a real ramrod to uh, getting this whole thing off the schneid, getting it going, and getting us headed in the right direction to building a school. And, uh, and Ms. Hausler is who? Eunice, uh, <laughs> as, well, um, Ray and Eunice Hausler were missionaries from, Aust from, I believe, spent some time in Australia, uh, but they're both trained uh, in the uh, Lutheran faith, and uh, she's a teacher. And she came up here and uh, uh, hit it off with a number of folks, including members of our church. And uh, when the school, when it became a school in 1975, when we had a kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, there were three teachers. It was Eunice, Mildred Mox, and my wife. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Those were the three that started the school. And uh, it just went from there to uh, building the school out here. But uh, it was Eunice who kind of got, gave us a kick in the head and said, let's do something here. And she was persuasive. And, uh, now, other than parents, to whom is Zion answer? The congregation. Pardon me? The congregation. The congregation. Mm -hmm. uh, but and there's no other, there's no too, overlying right? authority at, 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 a, at a level above the congregation. In other words, in the, we are, you in the Presbyterians, you have a synod or whatever. In the Episcopal Church, we have a diocese. Mm -hmm. uh, we there's have none a synod. of that hierarchy there. Mm -hmm. Oh, we, yeah, we have a synod that we have to answer to, and uh, uh, I mean, they set some of the standards for the schools and what's to be going on, books and materials. I uh, see. As far as uh, uh, religion books that are used are approved by Concordia, uh, our offices in, in St. Louis. We have to answer to our pastors, certainly, as far as what goes on, but uh, it's the congregation that primarily, you know, calls the shots with us. And is, is, uh, does Faith Lutheran participate mm -hmm. then in, in the operation of the school? Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, do you, do you consider that a part of the church's mission yep. efforts? Uh, yes, that's a good word, Judy, I think that's a part of our mission. Yes. Uh-huh. Now, you have a board. Yes. And are they appointed or uh, elected within your church? Elected. They're elected yes. to your... Every year we go out looking for members. We have a rotation of board members. I think uh, every year we, three members of the, of the school board are up for re-election. And uh, if they wish to run again, they, they are welcome to do so. If not, then we look for other candidates. Mm -hmm. well, we ought to do that in Congress. Do you try to have the candidates Rotate them be out. people who have children in the school, so that it's, so it's really in their face? Well, it, it would be nice <laughs> uh -huh. because they have a vested interest right. in the school, you know. 
Uh, but we also have people that are, that are active in other areas that would help us, could help us either in marketing or in mm -hmm. other ways to get the word out about uh, the school. And if they're certainly willing to volunteer their time, we'd love to have them, you know, serve on, on the board. And I think it's a good, ex they, they enjoy it, I think. There are extra meetings, but uh, they enjoy it. Well, we appreciate uh, Sheree and Steve being with us today to talk about education, the topic of the day. Uh, principally in this, this day, we were talking about the parochial schools with Zion Lutheran. Uh, you know, Ben Franklin came from an era of guys that you could, that quotable quotes. Yeah. I mean, there was a plethora, a plethora, I've forgotten which the pronunciation is, Mr. Uh, I have to get an English teacher out here. Uh, ben Franklin said, if a man empties his purse into his head, no one can take it from him. Think about that and ponder that. That would particularly apply to young men and young ladies who have had to go to work uh, uh, work their way through school. Thank sure. you very much, Shirley and Steve. Thank you. <laughs>